So, welcome back. We have just looked at the broad idea of a forward chaining rule based production system. We have seen how the memory is organized in, in terms of working memory elements, how rules are expressed as set of patterns and related to a set of actions. We have looked at how match is done and how once the match is over, how you pick a rule from all the rules that are matching. and go through that cycle of match, resolve, execute. Now, the problem with match is that it requires a lot of computation. You look at all the working memory elements, you look at all the patterns and all the rules and see whether they match or not. So, we want to now look at this algorithm called Rete algorithm or which is which uses a structure called the Rete net which does all this whole thing much more efficiently. So, first a little bit about the name. The word rete is based on the English word, I presume it is pronounced light in middle English, golden time English, which itself is derived from the Latin, Latin word rete which means a network. An anatomical mesh or network as in veins, arteries and nerves. So, you know just like we have networks in our body which carry signals, which carry blood and you know all kinds of things. A definition from the dictionary, a network especially of vessels or nerves. An anatomical part assembling or including a network. So, in that sense, since Rete itself means a network, calling it a Rete network is a little bit of an overkill, but that is what we do all the time. So, the inventor was Charles Forgy. As I said, he was doing his PhD in CMU. He developed the Rete algorithm in the 70s, but it took some time for the algorithm to become widely popular and now it is indeed widely popular when business rule technologies finally emerge. So, we are looking at this phenomena called business rule management systems is that you know if you put in lot of rules which which are business rules into some system, how what kind of a program will use those rules. So, BRMS stands for business rule management system. Most BRMS vendors develop their own algorithms that are known in elite circles as X rate or uni rate or so on, but they are all based on this idea of rate net. Rate 2 itself was a version that Charles Forgy developed which broke the legendary so called rate wall which referred to the dramatic performance degradation when the number of objects in the working memory element increased essentially. So, remember that match requires matching all patterns with all working memory elements. So, the, the larger the number of elements, the greater is the work that match has to do. Rate 3 is an evolution of Rate 2 developed in this company uh, called uh, Sparkling Logic and they had this uh, system called Rules Power which was you know sold as a Blaze advisor and you can read about this in this blog, uh, there is a link here if you press on this or if you just search for this, you will get this uh, blog and some of this history I am quoting from there. Then came something called Rete NT. The Ops J, the Ops J language is a version of the Ops language. Rete NT engine from production systems technology that is what Charles 4G started uses the latest incarnation from 4G essentially. The Rete NG works with any rate, rate. Some people say REIT, okay. So, I have a tendency to say Rete, but some people would say REIT based systems, but you know it is really not clear to me which is the correct pronunciation. So, I will say Rete, but some people say REIT including those from IBM, Oracle and so on. So, many people were using this system. To the commercial system, 
license at 5000 dollars per C, uh, CPU or it could be used by the production system technology clients with the OPSJ rule syntax. The new generation of this algorithm was much much faster than rated 3 essentially. How does it work? But Hoji would not uh, reveal that and he has not published. He published his data algorithm uh, and it is a paper that you can easily get, but this data NT he has not published. So, it is a trade secret and uh, you have to just try and guess as to what it could be. Here is some quote from uh, Carol and this thing about uh, how the data algorithm helped and she says the best usage of the rated network I have seen in a business environment was for alarm correlation and monitoring. So, if you have these large systems the networks you know telecom network or power network and things like that and you know you have devices all over the place and something may generate an alarm, how do you respond to that alarm? So, how do you monitor these networks and how do you handle alarms essentially? So, a stateful kind of execution where alarms are received over time as they occur essentially. And she says the actual telecom network is made up of thousands of pieces of equipment to be kept in mind of whoever is monitoring the system, the system. And there is no wonder that Rete outperforms any brute force system that you can think of essentially. So, she says that when one alarm is raised on one router, the Rete network does not have to reprocess all the past events to realize that we reach the threshold of 5 major alerts on the same piece of equipment. So, you are allowed up to 5 alerts on some piece of equipment and it was very easy for data network to monitor that essentially. That is because it does not do this match repeatedly as we will see. So, hours of processing time turned into seconds in the network management systems which she says was fabulous. So, what is that is that the rate network gives us and the rate algorithm gives us? One is that it does intra cycle saving. What is that? So, let us look at this example. Let us say you have a grading program in which uh, for every course, for every grade, you have a rule. So, this rule, for example, says that if in AI grade, who gets the C grade? And this rule says, that if a student has marks who is more than 59 and less than equal to 70, then you should give that C grade to the student essentially. So, replace this nil with C here. Of course, you would not do this, you would not write a separate rule for every course for every grade, you would more likely write a general rule, but this is just to illustrate what is the kind of savings that we are talking about here. So, here is another rule which says that in the ML course, what is the criteria for the C grade and it so happens that this grade is 49 and between 49 and 60. And then let us say you have students, among them are these two students I have mentioned here, Sneha and Sunil and Sneha is doing 5 courses and Sunil is doing 3 courses and then you know you have their marks and grades all available in that. And you can see that for example, the first rule will match the first working memory element if Sneha is doing that course and also the second rule will match the first working memory element if she is doing that course. Now, should we do this match twice? or is it that we can look at this working memory element only once and then say okay it matches this, it matches this and it matches this. So, there is some scope for saving there. Likewise, uh, for the second student Sunil whose working memory is the second working memory element, it matches uh, let us say he is also doing those two courses. So, this rule will match him also. And likewise for all the students who are doing all the courses. So, there is some matches. So, the intracycle savings that we want to do 
is that for example, we are talking about this, this uh, student, we are talking about a student, okay. So, we are saying the student has a name, roll number, age and year, let us say. And so, we have for example, a student called Sneha whose old number is something, whose age is 20, whose year is 3. But this student will match the AI grade rule. In fact, it will, the first pattern definitely will match all the AI grade rules A, B, C, D, E, whatever the grades are. If I have all different rules, then because Sneha is doing that course, she will match all those rules. Likewise, Sunil will match all those rules, not only the AI grade rules, but all the ML grade rules and so on. So, all we are saying is that here is the student who is doing this course and why match this repeatedly for every rule essentially. Can't we somehow optimize this and match, make, do the match only once and this is what the data algorithm allows, the data net allows us to do as we will see. In practice, as I said, you may not have uh, many rules. Uh, so, you might in add a third pattern here, which says the cutoff in subject S is uh, low and high, then you get grade G. And then, of course, you will have a list of such working memory elements. Instead of having a list of rules, you will have a list of working memory elements essentially. And as long as the marks are greater than low and less than or equal to high, then the grade is the grade that you have mentioned. So, all these three values, the lower cutoff, the upper cutoff and the grade can be all expressed in one working memory element. And then of course, your knowledge base would look different essentially. So, you would have the students and then you would have uh, the marks that the students got in different courses and then you would have the set of cutoffs essentially and this one rule will do the entire job for you essentially. But we wanted to illustrate as to what kind of intra cycle savings you want to do which means that if the same uh, pattern exists in different rules, then when the working memory element comes, you must not do match them every time but you should do the match only once. The next thing is intercycle savings. What is intercycle saving? Remember that a cycle is match, resolve, execute. Then you go back and do the match all over again. That does not sound like a great idea. So, let us say that if we have 300 students and between them they are doing 1200 courses, that means 1200 grades have to be assigned. That means 1200 times those matches will have to be done and 1200 times the grade has to be assigned. And remember that if they are doing 1200 courses, each course has 5 grades, let us say, uh, then we have 1200 into 5 grades that have to be matched. So, all that match work has to be done. So, initially there are 1200 instances of grade assignment rules in the conflict set. Because once you know the student marks, only one of those grades would be applicable. One of these instances is selected and fired. So, let us say you give Sneha her C grade in AI course. The remaining 1199 instances are still matching, nothing has happened to them. Just because we found one student who gets a particular grade, the rest of the students will get the grades that their marks define essentially and you have already done the match that you know for this student, for this course, this is the match, for this student, for this course, this is the match. If you have done that match once, why repeat, why repeat it again essentially. Hmm? So, that is a second kind of savings that Rite algorithm gives us, which is the intra cycle savings that between cycles, you do not want to repeat matches that you have done in the earlier cycle and that is a big thing. So, what the Rete algorithm does is it replaces this processing scheme where 
the match algorithm takes rules and working memory and gives you the conflict set with a new processing scheme in which the match algorithm is replaced by the rate net. We will see that the rate net encapsulates the rules inside it itself. And anyway, rules are long term memory, they do not keep changing. It is only the short term memory or the working memory which keeps changing. So, the, the rate net will accept changes in the working memory and produce changes in the conflict set, which means from one cycle to the next, it will carry forward the conflict set and once some change happens, you only look at the change and say what changes in the conflict set. As you can imagine, that is going to be very much more efficient than doing the match all over again. And we will come back and look at this algorithm in detail in the next session. But the idea is this, that you do not want to keep repeatedly doing matches again and again and again. Once you have done a match, remember that that match has happened essentially. So, we will do that in the next session.